Hey everyone, I'm Wes. And I'm Savannah. Welcome to the Tiny Watts installation videos. Today we're gonna show you all the steps involved in the phase one install. Let's do it. So step one, we wanna make sure we completely disconnect from the factory computer system. The easiest way to do that in a sprinter, they make it really nice. We're just gonna pop that little cover off behind me and we're gonna pull the negative post off the starter battery. If you have a Ford Transit or a ProMaster, same exact thing, you'll just remove the negative cable off the starter battery and you'll accomplish the same thing. All right, so we're up front on a Sprinter 170 and right behind that little door is the negative attachment post, which they make really easy for us where there's just a little pinch crimp that we can pinch, pull off, and by doing that, we'll disconnect from the factory electrical system. They recently moved the negative post behind this little door, but if you have a 2018 or older, it's gonna be down behind the gas pedal. Um, so just look in this general area and you'll see the same thing. So I'm gonna pop this off. We'll get behind this little door. And this just comes out of there like that. But all we really have to do is just kind of lift it down and you'll see in here, there is a negative attachment point that I can just grab, squeeze down the little tab on the top and we'll just pull that off. So in here you can see that negative post is attached to this little quick connect. There's a red plastic button on the top that we can just kind of pinch. So I'm just gonna go in there and pinch that. And that slides off just like that. So you can see it's no longer connected. It's just loose right here. It's super hard and awkward in there, but basically we know we're now disconnected from the system because all the dash lights and everything are off. Again, if you have an older Sprinter van, it's gonna be 2018 or older. It's just gonna be right underneath the gas pedal. And then if you have a Ford Transit or ProMaster, the whole point of this is to just remove the negative from the starter battery. Now that we removed the negative post, we're gonna loosen up these bolts to get underneath the seat. Since on this van we're doing the 24 volt alternator upgrade, we need to access the ignition source underneath this seat. I'm just gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket here so we can loosen up those seat bolts. These actually come with a super special like star drive. However, if you don't have that, a 10 millimeter socket works, which is really nice. So we're just gonna loosen these up. Kind of start with one. This van has swivel seats, which is pretty nice because we can actually turn the seat and get better access for these four bolts. Some people use power tools for this, but I don't wanna risk galling up the factory threads because then we would not be able to put our seat back on. All right, there's the second one. So we got two down, two more to go. And you don't wanna lose these because these are special Mercedes bolts. And I always just put them right here in the cup holder. So let's go to the other side and we'll do the other two. Well, like I said, we're pretty lucky on this van because it has swivel seats. So I can just go like this and have really nice access to the other bolt on this side. But you should be able to get to them no matter what if the van did not come with swivel seats and just use a lower profile wrench. Last but not least, get number four here. And don't forget, cup holder. The one thing you gotta watch out for on this is there is a safety plug underneath that if you disconnect it or damage it and you forget and you turn your van back on, you'll get an error code that you're airbags are not connected and you'll have to go to the dealership to reset that code. So the way I get around that is I just don't take the seat all the way off. I just scoot it forward just far enough to get to the terminal down below. So I'm just going to scoot this forward nice and carefully. Okay, so I just want to be careful of this wire underneath the seat. It does have a um, pretty good service loop in it, so it's gonna let me just slide the seat forward nice and slowly. And as we kind of see about half of this pedestal exposed, the seat's still stable. We didn't have to move it all the way out of the van. We're gonna remove this foam piece, which is just a little trim piece. We're just gonna get this out of the way. I just basically fold it in half, take a little piece of blue tape, and we'll just tape this up. So, so we don't have to wrestle it all day. Make sure you use enough tape to just keep this thing out of your way. All right, so this is our terminal block here. There's three wires from the factory. And if you reach over to the right side, you can just 
pop that lip up and this opens up like so. So you can see all three studs under here. Two of them are 10 millimeter studs and one of them is this little tiny one and that's our dead giveaway. So the small terminal is the ignition source, which is only energized when the van is running, and that's what we want. So we have a seven millimeter socket with a little extension here, and what we like to call our little buddy socket wrench. Um, I like using this extension because I can hold it down at the bottom and then turn it up here with my hand. And we do have a link to this in the description for our phase one installation kit. Okay, so again, there's three wires down here. The farthest one forward in this particular van, which is the smallest post, is our ignition source. So I'm going to come down here. Because we disconnected the battery, none of this is energized. And I'm just going to loosen this. Take this terminal off here. So you'll notice that that is a tiny little nut. And a little word of what, uh, wisdom here is uh, it's easy to lose. So what I do is, as this is loosened, I lift up on that ring terminal as I loosen and kind of create a sandwich between the ring terminal and the tool. And as we get loose, I can kind of sandwich that, get my finger under there, so we don't lose our little tiny nut. Yeah, so there's our ignition source. Uh, when we get to that step, we're actually going to run another wire up here and we're gonna jump on this terminal, maintaining the same factory connection, but we're gonna add ours on top of it and put that nut back on. So we'll get back to that, but we are prepped. All right, so in preparation for bringing our phase one kit upstairs, I have a 7 8 inch hole saw, and we're gonna have four things coming through the floor. So we're gonna have ground, alternator, power, alternator sensing wire, and then a temperature sensor. And so we're gonna drill four separate holes and put those plastic push bushings in each hole to make sure that the metal edge doesn't damage the wire. Doesn't matter what kind of floor situation you have going on, we're actually in the wall panel. This is on a Sprinter van, but what's really cool, if we're out here in the wall panel, when we drill through, it pops out in the sub panel down below. And so we don't have to go through any of our pretty floor. We're outside in the wall panel and we can pop out through some nice plastic factory pop outs that you'll see down below. With the 7 8 inch hole saw, I'm going to drill four holes and what that is also going to do is create a lot of metal shavings down here in the base of the wall. So metal shavings are always your enemy. In a van build, you want to make sure you manage them really well. So we like to vacuum them as we go and that way we don't create a huge metal shaving mess inside the sub panel of the van. Okay, so standard location for a pre-wired kit is passenger side wheel well, depending on your van. Um, we like to cross over the van from the alternator hookup up front. Right here we know there's a nice frame member forward of the passenger side wheel well. So there's this triangle piece and the first rectangular wall panel is where we drill our four holes down here. That way we can bring our ground up, alternator input, sense, and temperature. Super easy. All right, so as we get into making a mess here, we're going to vacuum as we drill. Uh, which is just a nice way to kind of keep up with the holes. Um, before we start drilling, I'm actually going to trade sides with Savannah. Drills spin to the right and they throw metal shavings that way. So if she's on that side with the vacuum as I'm drilling, it's the best way to stay ahead of the game with the metal shaving battle. So let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, so we're in the sub panel. You can see this little factory divot makes that space a little tight. So I'm going to go rear of that little divot where it's nice and wide and just spacing wise know that we are putting four holes so as i go here i'll just evenly space them out so we got the first hole drilled you can see it's nice and vacuumed up in there. Um, we kind of like to clean as we go, keep the kitchen clean as you're cooking dinner. Uh, so we got three more. Let's uh, evenly space this next one out and keep it ripping.
Okay, so that's our metal hole saw cut out. Obviously, that's super hot and super sharp right now. So if you get lucky and you can keep it on your drill, just kind of give it a second um, and it should be loose enough that once it cools down. Ready? <laughs> All right, so we got four holes drilled. Uh, next up is gonna be to just make sure we keep our battle up against the rust. So we use Rust-Oleum Flat Protective Enamel to make sure we prevent rust from happening. We got a link to that in our recommended toolkit. You can find that below. All right, so I just stepped out of the van. We got our Rust-Oleum here. I'm just gonna spray it into the cap. And then now we can just take the foam brush and it's a much more controlled way of painting those exposed metal edges. Okay, we're back in the van with our Rust-Oleum, and Savannah here is gonna help us out painting up these exposed metal edges. So yeah, you can see the exposed metal is what we're trying to cover up with the paint. And anywhere that you kind of see those scratches, you know that that's raw steel, which is prone to rust. And by painting it with this Rust-Oleum, we're preventing that rust from ever happening. All right, so we are gonna let the Rust-Oleum dry for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna take these half-inch plastic push bushings that came in your kit, snap them into each hole, and that will keep the sharp metal edge from cutting into the wire. All right, so we got four holes. We're gonna take our first plastic push bushing, and these just snap into place. Okay, so we just finished up all four holes. So we're now fully prepped for the Tiny Watts phase one wiring. So because this van's getting the 24 volt alternator upgrade, we have four wires coming from beneath the van into the living space. So the wires that will be coming through the wall, we're gonna have a power cable for the alternator, the sensing wires, and the grounding cable, as well as the temperature sensor. That's a wrap. Be sure to check out our other installation videos for the other steps of your project. We'll see you in the next video.